Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome to another episode of Shape Your Truth Podcast. I am your host, Dr. Kamika. And on this podcast, we like to talk about weight loss. We'd like to talk about self-development and self-realization. And I am pleased to introduce to you some of these brilliant women, young women, soon to be women uh, that are here to empower themselves and losing weight and uh, living a holistic life and learning about body positivity. And I have joining me Micah, Alisa, Joanna, Naomi, Janaya, and Jalen. And they are some extra teams, part of the extra team mentee program. Okay. And together we're going to talk about their journeys, the challenges they've had, the triumphs in embracing their true selves. Okay. Um, these girls are all between the age of um, 14 and 16. So both of them, I think, are 14. So they are budding teenagers. So they just like barely teenagers or they're just learning the ropes of teenagers. So uh, and just now, uh, most of them just are, are just going to uh, high school for the first time. So. We're going to start off with Micah, and I think Micah's the youngest here. Micah, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you and oh. what you Something. Tell us something, Micah. Hi, my name is Micah Polk. I'm 13 years old, and I'm going to the eighth grade. I'm enrolled in an early college program that helps students to get a great education and graduate high school with an associate's degree. The program is something I know I will benefit from um, in the future. What program, I Micah? The Compton Early College Program. Mm -hmm. um, I know that this will help me benefit um, and when I graduate high school, since it will give me an early associate's degree. Um, and this will benefit me when I move to college. Since I'm set on becoming a cosmetologist, I'm dedicated to honoring my skill and knowledge in this field. Besides my academic pursuits, I'm also a cheerleader and a basketball player. In both sports, I try and aspire to be the best version of myself and do the best that I can do. These activities not only phys keep me physically active, but also teach me valuable lessons in teamwork, discipline, and perseverance. Balancing academics and sports can be challenging, but I'm committed to excelling in both areas. Um, okay. That's it? Well, that's all you want to say, or you want to say so You can finish, but we're going to ask some specific questions about you, some more questions later. All right. But I'm grateful for the opportunities I have and determined to make the most of them. My goal is to become a successful cosmetologist and inspire others to pursue their dreams with passion and dedication. All right, Micah. Thank you for that. So, Joanna, can you introduce yourself and say hi to uh, all the people out there and, and that watch our podcast and listen? Hi, I'm Joanna Biddle, and I am 14 years old, and I recently graduated from middle school from the from the empowering plus size teenage girls membership. I'm getting a healthier mindset and lifestyle. It motivates me to do better with my health and managing the amount of food I eat. In the future, I wish to be an ultrasound technician. When I learn how to have a better mindset, it will help me set up my goals for the future. All right. All right. That's good, too. Okay. Naomi. Hi. Introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about you. A little bit about you. <laughs> you on mute, Naomi. You on mute, Naomi.
We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Okay, try to make your sound work, Naomi. We're going to ask uh, Jacqueline okay. to tell us a little try bit about make your sound work. We're going to ask. Who is ask that? Okay, we need to mute somebody. Who is that? Okay, we need to mute somebody. There's a delay. I'm hey, Jasmine. Hello, I'm Jasmine Tucson. I'm 15 years old. Um, I'm going to the 11th grade, and what um, I benefited, I, what I benefited from the group, is a healthier mindset and a healthier, um, a healthier lifestyle on how to live and what is correct and what is not, and um, how to how to manage your mindset and life more. And I want to be um, a hair cosmetologist as well. Awesome. Okay. Naomi, you got your sound working? Can you hear? Can you hear? No. No. Okay. Um, now, Elisa, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, hi, my name is Elisa. Um, I'm 14 years old. I graduated from the eighth grade. Um, I'm starting high school this year. And the thing that I benefited from this group was learning how and how to be able to communicate with each other in different ways and learning how that even though some things may seem bad, once you try to do it, it's not really as bad as you think it is. And I want, when I grow up, I want to be in the medical field and become an anesthesiologist. Awesome. 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 Thank you, girls, for those introductions. I'm so glad you were able to join us today. So, we learned a little bit about you. So, today, like we said, we're going to talk about body image and uh, self-acceptance, okay? So this is a little different than where we have our meetings. We are going to just chit-chat, ask you some questions, and, and and then we're going to be done, okay? And this is just girl talk, okay? So. Okay. How has your perception of your body evolved over time or since you've been learning more about uh, your body image how has your perception how do you perceive yourself now let's start off with uh Alisa. Alisa? huh how has your perception of your body changed since we've been since you've been in the group or since you've been learning about body image well i think i start to look at it not as something bad but as something like it, that motivates me to want to do better because before when i would like look at it i would just be like sad and feel some type of way but looking at it it shows me like different ways that I can better fix myself and help myself and it motivates me to want to do more and to do more about myself. Okay, so when you mean that when you're saying that you mean like exercise or you mean like picking out clothes you got a better and uh how to put on your clothes better or feel better, more comfortable in your clothes? Yeah, like all of that together. All of it together, okay. 
How about you, Jessalyn? Um, the it uh, made me look uh like look differently at it because like like she said at first, I thought of it like as oh um I don't want to wear this because I don't feel comfortable in it or I thought like people would come for me when they would bring it up. But now that I've done this, it's made me feel different about myself and it's helped me um change the way i look at certain things and uh it it, uh, it also has helped me like in, in clothes wise like mm -hmm. in awesome okay joanna give me some excitement can you tell me how is your perception of body image i gotta get like like what the other two girls mm -hmm. were saying like at first i saw my body as like a problem because you know like in these days people get like bullied for stuff like that mm -hmm. but now like since i've been in this group i'm starting to appreciate myself more and it's showing me how to improve who i am and to like become a better person with better attitudes and wanting to be better for myself Awesome, awesome. Micah, how about you? Well, still going on the same topic and what they were saying. Um, at first, um, I was less confident. Um, I would think about how much junk food I would always eat, but the problem was I couldn't stop eating it. So during like new habits routine. But now that um we have started doing this, my um body image has been more positive. I think better about myself. Awesome. Naomi, is your sound working now? You wanna you wanna try um you wanna you wanna try get it um, tablet, get the tablet or the tablet get the tablet or the laptop? Okay, and then now come back. Uh, if you can leave a second and come back back, okay, get on the other thing. Okay, you got the link. Okay. All right. So, can you guys share a story? One with somebody. I want to ask all of you this thing, but can you share a story? Uh, about discussing a moment where you felt the change or in where you felt you had or you had to embrace a challenge when you on your um your you know your journey now and what has that how has that helped you to be more self-accepting can you think of a time or a moment that was pivotal that made a moment of change or a challenging that you had to face that made you feel uh, more accepted of yourself. Anybody? Who want to take it? Who want to take the question? You said a challenge that that has happened that made us made us feel more accepting of ourselves. Yes, yeah, some challenge you face or some pivotal moment, some moment of change that. Something had to change, and now it uh, made you feel more uh, acceptance towards yourself or uh, helped you on your journey towards self-acceptance. Well, like for me, like I don't know about everybody else, but it had to be with the, the challenge was like me constantly eating for no reason, like because I was bored or and also had to do with like an, an emotional problem. And because of this, it has restricted me from doing that. And it allowed me to feel better about myself. And like, it gave me a lot more energy too, because mm -hmm. I was just like going eating and then laying down or sitting down. And like, it, it caused me to become more accepting of myself because as I stopped doing it, I saw the person that I was 
And mm-hmm. I like told myself, I was like, hey, this is what you do and you need to stop doing that. And so like I accepted who I was and because I accepted who I was, it's become easier for me to stop doing that mm-hmm. because once you're in denial about your situation, it's harder for you to stop doing it because mm-hmm. you don't think you don't think that you're capable of doing that. And so when I finally sat down and figure out that, hey, that was my problem and I accepted it and it caused me to do a lot better. That's good, Mama C. So, so you saw, you examined yourself and you saw, was there any like, uh, why? Was it because your mom brought it up that you start thinking about it? Or what made you realize or sit down and say, look, I, this is a problem? Like, it was one time where I went in the kitchen, I got some food for no reason. And the thing that made me realize that is when I started to eat it and not like, like spit it out and threw it up, my body was rejecting it. And I felt like after I ate it, I, my body felt bad. Like I had to like throw up or something. I was like, I don't want to eat this, but I'm eating it because I'm bored. And so I don't want to feel that. I personally hated that feeling. I didn't want to feel it again. So I told myself, I was like, you have a problem. And like doing this, my mom made me do this um, challenge and stuff. And that like, it honestly helped me. Okay, good. Thank you, Mom C, for that, that moment. So uh, another thing about um, body image, we want to talk a little bit more about body image. That was an example of self-acceptance. Um, it's a common challenge. And we already talked about some of uh, how you become more accepted of your body. With, uh, but what was the biggest struggle you've had with overcoming body image and how did it did you overcome it what did you see something on tv or social media who made you feel a certain way about your body or maybe somebody said something what started the negative thoughts and then how did you um how did you struggle what was that how was that struggle and how did you overcome that or how are you overcoming it now you all want it somebody want to take the question or should i oh i'll answer it well somebody else gonna answer too but you can go ahead mom <laughs> okay um with me the thing that made me realize well i have wait what was the question Oh, I'm talking about, uh, probably was a little bit confusing. Your body image, like you might have seen something in social media or somebody said to you or a kid or adult or, um, but what made you recognize the body that it was something wrong with your body or that you, or what was it? Was it something you saw on TV, something your mom said, something a relative said, something a kid said, and then, uh, how are you overcoming that or have you overcome it? If you already overcome it, how did you overcome it? Um, for me, it was like seeing people on social media and movies knowing that they look good. And then like when I looked in the mirror, I noticed that my body didn't look like that. Like it was kind of like, and then it was kind of a mix of things. Like people would say things like my mom and like it starts to make me feel bad and feel like like the things it's not the things that they will say to me is how often they said it and what they would say and it caused me to like feel bad about myself and think that when people see me they like feel disgusted and so i that's like helping me i'm not i haven't overcome it yet but like it was the reason why I wanted my body to change Mm -hmm. and and yeah okay okay Joanna you have an opinion on it tell me about a struggle you've had or something you had to overcome your body image issue how did you do it 
Well, it, like, you know, it all started, like, seeing other girls being able to go out with, like, their with cute alpha zones that's, like, fit, it's like, a certain body type and, like, getting jealous and wishing that I had that and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. and then, like, I just saw myself as bad, but I know that I should accept how I am and embrace it, but, like, seeing other people just made me feel bad. So that's how it all started. Mm -hmm. So are you still struggling with it? Are you working on it? How are you, how are you working on How are we doing with that? Well, like, it comes around sometimes, but, like, before I started being in this program, it wasn't as bad. Now it's not as bad as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Like, it got better and I stopped caring about what other people really think and loving myself for who I am and not trying to be like somebody else. Okay. Thank you for that, Joanna. So I wanted to ask uh, Jasmine, so you know how they have these standards of beauty where we see models or people, movie stars or something like that. Have you had any societal pressures to dress a certain way or be a certain way and uh, because or want or want to be a certain way because of those kind of things? Yeah, um, it was mainly like about bathing suits. Like, like during the summertime, we would go, everybody would have bathing suits on and then my bathing suit, I, I would want a certain bathing suit because I didn't like how, I like because everybody else would wear bikinis or certain bathing suits that showed, I guess, more than what mine's in. And that just made me want to do it, but like, I didn't feel comfortable in my own mm -hmm. skin. So um, the bathing suits like made me uh, come to realize like I needed to change, like a better change. A change, okay. So when you say a change, did it make you, does this change, you want to change, is it making you feel optimistic or is you still, you feel down or do you feel like you can make a change or that um, you are changing? Um, I feel like I could change, but like since then I've had a different mindset. So like back then I was just like, oh, I don't want to go or I want to wear a certain bathing suit. So, like, cause I didn't feel comfortable, but now it's like I didn't. I now it's like I don't care what other people think. So was, I can I can make a change, but at the same time I have a different mindset from back then when I when it had first made a toll on my life. Mm hmm. Okay. Thank you, Jessalyn. So Naomi, can you hear us now? Are you with us? Can you hear us? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So Naomi, introduce yourself to us because we didn't get to hear from you earlier. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Um, well, my name is Naomi Taylor. I have recently graduated the eighth grade and not too long ago, um, something very tragic got told to me by my doctor that um I'm at a high risk with um my weight, my blood sugar, everything. He he had told me, sorry. He had told me I would either have to go with through with a weight loss surgery or um start shots. And I started the shots and so far it's been going good, but it comes with a lot of non good things like um nauseousness, tiredness, um, not wanting to eat sometimes and being feeling really weak sometimes. With all that it has been hard, but with this extra teens group um, that I'm in, it's really been pushing me to keep going. And with all the help and all the support, I really feel like as long as I keep believing in myself, everything will be fine. Mm, thank you for that, Naomi. So we're going to start with you, give you a chance to answer about self-acceptance. You talked on a little bit of that while you just, what you just said. So when you had to take the shots, what made you say, okay, I'm gonna be a, I'm gonna be a part of this, I'm gonna take it seriously, and I really want to do this for myself this time. 
Well, um, it all began like when I was at school. I used to, I used to, and kind of still do get bullied about my weight, and just seeing other people doing fun activities at school and participating really made me feel like I can't last as long as them. And at my middle school, at my old middle school, I had a certain PE teacher who um really made it hard for me to want to do something because she push, tried to push me to do what other kids do, which I couldn't. When it came to running laps, the most I ever did was at least two or three, and Pacers, the most I did was 10. And just hearing her call me all all types of names like lazy a really made it hard for me and difficult to try to push myself but with also hearing from my doctor that i'm at a high risk is another thing which is like now i have a teacher telling me stuff like this then my doctor is also adding on top of it it's like it's just got hard and also being able to do sports that i love like dancing cheering it's hard for me to I got rhythm, but it's hard for me to keep up and stay on track with the cheer girls and stuff like that. I you lose breath really easily. And like with dance and cheer and all that fun stuff, it's hard for me to still continue to do it, knowing that I have a weight problem. So mm -hmm. with this group, it helped me see that as long as I keep pushing myself and hearing what people have to say, it's like Naomi. You need to get a. Tr you need to get on track. You need to stay on board. And you need to push yourself to do something. Mhm. Mm so when you do that, and when the girls, other people encourage you, how do you feel? How does it make you feel now about getting losing the weight? Does it, does it make it any easier? Um. Sometimes it does, and sometimes it's really hard because, like. Hearing that people are on my side, hearing that people are here for me, it really helps me be like, you got this. But then it's like, at the same time, it's like, it's hard to do it with all the pain and the nauseousness that come with doing what I'm doing, especially with the shots. And I have a higher dose this time on the shots and not a lower dose. It's hard to deal with it. And sometimes I do cry because it's like, is it worth it? But looking like, I feel like in the future, looking back on it, when I see my progress, because I do see progress right now, um, when I have more progress, I would eventually see that it is worth it. I just have to keep pushing myself. So you right now, it sounds like you're in a little of a low moment. So we are here to encourage you that you're doing a good job, okay? you come a, a long way, and you've been so happy lately and smiley and everything. So... We are very, very proud of you and for what you're doing and even for sharing what you've been sharing. And um, you can do it and we are going to be here to support you 100%. Okay, so thank you for sharing that, Naomi. Um, I'm going to move on to another question. So, so do you guys know what body positivity is? How do you define body, to, body positivity? Let me know, uh, Micah. What is body positivity? Well, body positivity is when you see yourself in a positive way, like when you look at your body in a positive way. Mm -hmm. have, have you um, ever thought about if you think well about your body or because, of, because you think so or because other people told you something are you think down about it? Are you encouraged about how you look when you say body positivity? Does it, um, what, what comes to your mind about yourself? Is it a negative thing or, or do you feel maybe I'm, I'm there? Are you like, I'm, I'm trying to get to body positivity? Um, I would say I'm there with posit um, body positivity because when I see myself, I try to think um, on a more positive note, instead of shaming myself and putting myself down, I try to um, lift myself up. Mm -hmm. So do, do you do like some affirmations or what do you tell yourself? How do you put yourself up? Well, um, in my head, I think um, how everybody is not perfect mm -hmm. and how everybody has their own flaws and mm -hmm. how I'm no different. 
and um, everybody has something that they think is wrong with them, and um, I just have to be better about it. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any like mantra or thing you say like to yourself, like, or do you speak to those negative things with a positive thing, or are you just uh? Or do you talk about it to anybody? Or do you bring it up when you're feeling bad about it? Or are you just keeping it to yourself? Well, I keep it into myself a lot. Like, mm -hmm. um, I think, but like when I think of those negative things, I also think of the positive things that some people have said to me. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people at school are always calling me pretty and always telling me how good I look. And that lifts me up rather than bringing Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing that, um, Micah. So, so body positivity and confidence. How do you see those two? How do you? What do you feel uh, more? Comp what what gives you more um, pride? Being positive about your body or just having overall confidence? Take it away, somebody. <laughs> Can you repeat the question, Dini? So when you think about yourself and you say, what do you feel um, more that you're more confident overall or you feel more positive about your body? Uh, what, what, where do you weigh in the balance? Which is more? Do you feel more confidence overall or are you, your body, how you look at yourself in the mirror is more? Or do you still struggle with your confidence and but you like your body now or do you have uh you don't you have more confidence in other areas but you still struggle with how you look in the mirror i feel like um it goes hand in hand like once you have body positivity your confidence um instantly rises or when you're confident you don't really think about the other things because you're confident in how you look and secure in how you look. So I feel like overall, I feel like the confident weighs more because once you're confident, like nobody could tell you anything. Mm -hmm. about yourself. Mm -hmm. So that brings me to where I was talking. I was excellent. Um, Jessalyn, when we are talking about being a whole person and not just dwelling on how we look in the mirror and how our bodies are shaped or what size we are. Uh, we're talking about how we are in our whole life, our health, how we deal with people, um, how we deal with each other, um, how we educate ourselves, how we um, feel about ourselves, how we take care of ourselves. Those are all parts of about you is not just your weight so having that confidence overall is what we want you how we want you to view yourself we want you to be confident in every area not just now oh i lost weight and so at least i've got a better waistline no you want to that's good yay you got a better waistline but also you want to be confident and happy and proud of the other areas in your life as well right Okay, so thank you for that. Okay, so we just gonna I got some questions here. I have a so we can get where she go. Um, I'm not sure she disappeared and we still in the meeting. I think she the host. <laughs> Mama, see, I think you're on mute. How oh, that happen? Okay. Okay. So, oh, yeah. let's go rapid fire. I'm just going to call out some questions. Okay. So, how do you handle moments when you feel insecure about your appearance? Uh, Naomi. I said, how do you? Handle moments when you feel 
insecure about your appearance? Um, when I feel insecure about my um appearance, it really holds me down. But like, it takes like one person, like my mom, to say, "You're good enough. You're beautiful." It makes it lifts me up a lot by a lot. So it's like, at one time I could be, "Oh, mom, I look like this and that," but I don't look like her. And she's she gives the most inspiring speeches. So it's like with those speeches, it helps me see that I'm good enough the way I am and so what if people don't like the way I look? It's all in myself to believe how I look and to believe inside of me how I feel about my whole self. And recently and continuously, I've been really confident in myself. Like, people could have told me, oh, you look like this in this outfit. And I'd be like, I think I look good. And as long as I, I feel like as long as I keep telling myself in my mind that I look good and telling people I look good is just going to keep bringing more positivity to me. Okay. Thank you for that. That's awesome. So now have you ever got anybody jump in? Have you ever tried a new fashion or style since you started more confident about yourself? Did you change like, okay, now I I'm okay to wear this or I can uh feel comfortable not to wear this or have you changed any about your fashion or style or have you gained more fashion and style have you started wearing like different dresses different shoes and things like that because you're more confident um, i have um before i used to wear a lot of shorter shorts and crop tops but since this diet started um and i i felt better about myself but um I've also changed my style I wear a lot less um crop tops more full shirts like this and I'm more confident with not showing off too much of my body awesome Micah oh Joanna how about you have you changed your style up a little bit well A little bit like well it's summertime but I still wear like a lot of jackets though even when it's hot though because I, I don't feel comfortable in like the shirt I have on or something but like before I wouldn't even wear the shirt at all but now I actually wear the shirt and sometimes I don't wear a jacket with them so I think my style changed a little bit in that way and that's good okay so the, what the jacket does? What does the jacket do for you? It's not really much about my stomach, but it's more about like having mm-hmm. boobs. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I don't, I don't like bringing attention to that area, so I'd rather be covered up than shown. You know. Mm-hmm. Okay, so we are making good steps. You say you wear the shirt even now that you like, and not worry as much about people looking at thinking about your boobs yeah okay awesome you're making progress it's good okay so everybody can answer this question what is your favorite way to relax and unwind um my way to relax and unwind is sitting down and coloring or if I'm in a good mood, I will put on music with my sisters and we'll just dance to our room. It really helps me release a lot of anxiety and anger and built up emotions when I dance or color. And also when I do hair, I've been recently doing my little sister's hair, my dad's hair. I've been pushing myself to do new things with hair and drawing and dancing. Those are the three main things that help me really release a lot of stress anxiety and uncomfort all right elisa um my favorite thing to do to relax or unwind i like i like like laying down and watching tv or i like taking like showers too like 
it makes me feel like calm and comfortable and then laying down and watching a movie or something or even like going to sleep too mm -hmm. I and waking up from there it makes me feel more relaxed mm -hmm. and also talking to friends too mm -hmm. it makes me feel like i like it feels good to get stuff off your chest or just mm -hmm. having a friend to talk to okay that's how you feel mom too I like to take baths too. That's my favorite thing. The bathtub. I like to sit in the bathtub with bubbles and stuff. That's my and throw a couple of bath bombs in there. Then I'm I'm feeling really good when that happens. <laughs> How about you, Jocelyn? Um, the main thing that um helps me like get comfortable is quietness. I like my peace and my quiet, like being alone, but that's uh sometimes rare in this household so like sleeping mm -hmm. after a nice shower or after doing my chore oh okay I, I well a good nap especially when you're going to school and stuff and you get off of school you've been all day uh and maybe even have it walk home and you had it's good to have a little nap every now and then i believe that's a good power naps they've always helped me when i had to study and all that kind of thing so gives you a good 15 minute nap and you re ready to take on the next part of the day so that's good i like that too okay so now uh, who are the people in your life that make you feel accepted for who you are. Um, you make me you make me feel accepted, Vivi. My mm -hmm. mom makes me feel accepted. My dad also makes me feel accepted and my grandma as well. How about you, uh Joanna? My mom makes me feel accepted. Like even when I put myself down, she always lifted me up and like Micah said, you made me feel accepted by helping us with our body image. And like some of my friends make me feel accepted when they compliment me and stuff. Awesome. Okay, Alisa, how about you? He lost Naomi. What happened? Oh. Well, like you, you make me feel accepted, but in my perspective, it's like, for me, I would never truly or fully feel accepted until I accept myself. And so many other people may compliment me or say something good about me, but I think what I struggle with is something internal. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, I will never feel okay about myself until I feel okay about myself or accept it. Well, um, okay. Now that's something to talk about. Okay, so when you're trying to improve yourself, that's good. Like if you say, I want to keep improving myself in areas, but accepting for who you are and this is who I am and being all right with that, that's what we that's what I'm talking about right now. Now, trying to do something to improve yourself or always wanting to uh get to another level or find out some learn something new and things like that that's that's okay but you being okay with who you are as a person is what i'm talking about so do, do you feel feel the same way well yes kind of but mm -hmm. i i don't feel as bad as i did before mm -hmm. but like there's still some times where like most of the time where i don't feel okay about myself so um what can we do as a group here with your friends and everyone a community that we're developing how can we help you well like that you guys are part of the reason why i don't feel the same way that I did before because now I know like 
because of this group that there's people who are going through the same thing as me. Mm-hmm. And I'm not, like, I have people to count on and people to talk to and people who really understand me. And I think that's what's helping me. That's good. Okay. I'm glad that's helping you. I'm glad you're feeling like you've been getting some help. And, and you know what? You don't win, run a marathon is, is not a quick thing. He's going to, you take time, you keep working on it, and you're going to get better. And, and just stay positive and stay with your tribe and your community, the people that think like you and have the same values as you. And don't, don't kind of, don't get the negativity. Don't let it be a part of, um, of who you are. Like if you remove yourself, if it's a environment that making you feel negative about yourself. Or you can call a friend and tell them how it's, what is going on. It's been very important that you keep staying vocal about it, but also um, don't uh, allow yourself to be overtaken by negativity, even in your own, between your own two ears. You got to speak to that. Okay. Now, so. That answered that question. I was going to ask, how can friends support each other when they, to help them feel more confident? Um, and that's kind of what we just talked about with what Mama C answered um, about you guys and this group helping her. Um, so, and do any of you have a, um, a, a suggestion of how the group or other friends can feel help you feel more confident in areas for me my friends have like made me feel confident because they're like a bigger girl like me so seeing them being confident wearing like clothes that uh other people tell like tell people bigger girls can't wear have made me confident so i'll say like being confident in yourself so your peers can see that and you can give off that energy to them. Mm, thank you for that, Jason. And then I'm going to ask, when people uh, talk about you or they try to bully you, do you know what to say when that happens, when, when somebody I was trying to put you down in a way. It could be about your weight. It could be about your body. It could be about something, some other area. Do you have a way to defend? Do you know how to defend yourself? And what do you do if when somebody's trying to bully you? I know you guys have dealt with that um, some um, in school and things. So how do you, what do you tell them when they try to put you down about something? Um. Um, sometimes I would, well, the old me would have tried to yell and argue about it, even though I knew not what they said was true, but like about the weight thing, I knew it was true. I was a big, heavy set girl, but now I laugh it off because I know who I am and I know my weight and how the outside of me doesn't define me. I know my looks and none of my weight or whatever they say on the outside defines who I am in, in, in the inside. So now I laugh it off because I know who I am and I truly shouldn't care what people think about me if it's coming out negatively. Awesome. 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 Anybody else? Anybody else have felt a uh, bully or put down by somebody? It don't have to be just like kids. If like and even an adult, have you have you? Um, what do you say? Or how do you defend yourself? How do you advocate for yourself? Um, well, with me, like I think. My problem mostly has to do with the adults, like um, always saying something about me. 
and like there's really nothing I can do or say to like defend myself but yeah it happened recently too but it's really nothing I can say or do and it like hurts that people look at me like the adults look at me the way that they do and Mm -hmm. yeah it's really not much I could say to them or defend myself because at the end of the day, they're the adult and I'm a child. Mm-hmm. But yeah. So, so when it's that way, where it's like that much of authority, where it become disrespectful if you say anything, have you discussed that with your parents? Well, no. no. Sometimes it's like what I try to it's always like there's it's never me just telling them how I feel it's always it's like something else that comes up in a conversation that's wrong with me and with other people like the other person who said something the other day like if I were to say something they said it in front of like a lot of people a lot of adults and if I were to say something, then everybody would start getting on my head and stuff like that. So it's really not much I can say about it. It's just like I have to deal with it. Mm, okay. And uh, I know that I know that feeling. I know it doesn't feel good when you have to uh, when you're stuck in that situation, uh, even if it's a relative. And I know you probably, some of you, a lot of you have had that such circumstance happen to you where you don't know why this is happening and you really can't speak up for yourself. So in those situations, it's very imperative that you be verbal and you tell your parents what is going on, how it is, how it is making you feel. And I, from what I hear with you, Mama C, you're saying that you feel like after you try to tell them, they just talk at you and nobody's including you in what's being said, right? Yes. So we are going to, today, learn to be more vocal. And I want, so since we've been doing this program, you guys have been getting a better communication with your moms right so now those kind of things too you your mom is your uh biggest advocate right now so if somebody is doing things to you that way adults or people of authority in your life like Naomi you said the teacher it could be somebody at church, somebody, an aunt, an uncle, somebody, bring it to your parents in a respectful way and tell them how this made you feel, okay? And be honest and be, and don't try to um, manipulate, okay? Don't add more than it is. Be honest. And if it really is affecting you and you really need your parent advocate for you to speak to that person and tell them how that made you feel and and how you're trying to work on this and that thing and that other thing but if people keep doing this it kind of hinders that so your parent will understand that this is hurting you and that they will they're your ultimate protector they're not going to let nobody hurt you so you got to be more vocal and uh, even if you can't verbalize it all the way yet you can write it down and if you have to give them a note if you don't know how to tell them or even that person that adult you that you're that's giving you a hard time you you can't talk to them in a bad way but you can write them a note and say when you said this to me or when we had this exchange or whatever it made me feel really down on myself and anybody who is um, a, a, a good person would not want you to feel that way. So then you can open up a lines of communication. Um, but if it's really, really something that's 
you so you scared to even approach, make sure you verbalize it to your parents and tell them the severity of what how you feeling. Don't add any extra. Don't put on. Tell it exactly how it is and ask them to intervene for you. Okay, you can do that. You can ask them, Mom, I need you to help me with this. Okay, I can't do it. And you can talk about it calmly and respectfully and let your mom advocate for you that in that situation. Okay, so um, that is very important. I'm glad you brought that up because um, it's very important that you guys learn or practice. Maybe we have some role playing of how to deal with the situation. Okay, even when it's kids, when it's adult. Even to practice how to go to your parent, we can you can do some of that. Like, uh, we can have a scenario where we say this is the argument or whatever, and then how you will go to your parent, and how you will go to the adult, how will you talk to the other kids? What do you say when this happened? You need to have like a game plan of how to do it so that you be more comfortable because you are going to be your own advocate when you get a, to be an adult, and if you don't speak up for yourself and protect yourself or know how, then you're going to allow other people to make the choices and put you in the box and put you in a place where you may not want to be, okay? So we're going to practice on that because that's also about being a whole well person, being able to have your boundaries and um, knowing when to set, set um, take up for yourself and speak up for yourself and advocate for on your behalf and um, negotiate your needs over somebody else's, okay? So we're going to work on that. That is a good um, lesson we can segue into later. So in the mentorship program, it fosters supportive community. Um and you guys have reflected a lot of how the community, how the program has impacted you so far. Um, how do you feel about uh, the sisterhood you found found here? Do you feel like it's growing into a sisterhood? Do you feel like you will want to bring other people in, and that you um, know the, somebody else that you like? Oh. I'm in this group and I think you would benefit. Do you feel like this is good enough for me to say, I know somebody else that could use this help where you want to bring them into your sisterhood? Um, yes, I would like if I do run into anybody or if I do know which I know a few people, but I don't know if they're going to be able to. Um, I feel like if I knew somebody who was struggling with the same problems we were, I feel like this would be a good group and a good sisterhood group that they would love to uh, join. And I feel like it's a lot of sisterhood here with the fact that I'm close to everyone in this group. My cousin, Jaslyn, a lot of my cousins, some of my god sisters. It's just... um. I consider you guys more than a god sister or um, a cousin. I consider all of them my sisters because all of them have been there for me through my rough times. And I feel like it could more sisterhood could grow through this group. Mm. Okay, awesome. Okay. Uh, anybody else? Um, do you feel a sisterhood here? Like Naomi said, do you feel like we're growing into that? Yes, I feel like we are. Like, when I first joined the group, I didn't, like, I was hesitant because, like, oh, I don't go to the church, so I only know Naomi and Janai, I don't know everybody. But now I feel, like, comfortable enough to, like, get on here or have my camera on or not be shy or anything. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I feel like it's going into a system. Awesome. Thank you for that. Okay, so... One last thing, and then we're going to let you guys go. 
do you feel like you've had a mind shift from before? Or even if it's not all the way where you want it to be, do you see that this is something permanent you want in your life that you don't want to let go? Not the program, just how you feel about yourself and the change in your mindset about things. Can you repeat the maybe? Your mindset change. Have you had one anyway? Maybe you you don't know if you had one. But if you had, is it something you want to hold on to and maintain? Do you feel like this is going to stick with you? Um, No matter about the program, that this is with you. Your mindset about everything, have you been on your new journey is going to stick with you and you're not going to let it go. Do you feel like you have a permanent mindset change? Um, I do feel that I have a permanent mindset change. Like a lot about me have changed, like my attitude, my personality, the way I come off to people. I've been very calm with my sibling because I noticed that it's not them, even though sometimes they could be a little annoying. Not all the time it's them. It's just how I feel about myself inside. And recently, and I recently I have noticed that um I've been coming off very nice to my siblings. I feel like um my attitude, my personality, and my emotions have changed. Like at first, the old Naomi wanted to do nothing but sit down, sleep, and eat, watch TV. But now. I'm more active now. I want to go to the park. I want to go play now. I want to get up out the shower, work out. Um, I even want to start helping around the house. Like I've been helping my mom with the little things that I can, and I feel like that's a big step jump. And I've been more confident in what I wear. Like I usually wanted to wear sweatpants and pants, but now I'm confident in wearing shorts, short sleeve shirts. I don't feel like I have to cover up myself with a turtleneck or long pants I feel like a lot of me have changed in a good way and I think with my journey if I stay on it and keep on track more things more good things and more accomplishments could come to me in the future all right thank you so much Naomi okay Joanna you admittedly say you been had the most <laughs> trouble having a mind shift, shift, uh, shift in your mindset. How do you feel like you're getting closer to being more um, changing the way you look at things about doing anything or being motivated to do things? If I'm going to be honest, like, no. But, like, I know that I'm changing, though. Because even, like, how I see myself and how I see others because like the old me would be more angry about stuff but now I'm more calm and just letting it be you know mm-hmm. but I do still need to work on my attitude though because it gets out of hand and I don't be want to do stuff all the time but as time goes by I'm going to work on becoming more like not happier, but becoming like wanting to do more things and mm-hmm. not just being lazy. You get more outgoing. Yeah. And you know how you do that? You got to just start pushing past that, well, I don't want to go and just go one time, or I don't want to do, I don't, I just want to stay here. I don't want, I just want to sit here. I don't want to go to just make yourself. And as you keep doing it, it'll get easier and then you will find some fun of those things and you gotta try it you might not like everything but when you see okay i'm gonna make myself do that i'm not gonna wait for my mama to say you gotta do this you want to say i'm gonna take initiative to and just try it try one day one time just you don't have to do everything but try it like one time a week or something say i'm gonna challenge myself to do 
this and stay consistent or try it out. And then if it's not working good and you don't like that, just try something else. Okay. All right. So anybody else have anything else to say or anything you want to share or anything you have coming up that you want to talk about? Anything you're excited about before we get out of here? No, you guys not doing anything. No, Jasmine, what about your program, your scholarship program? What about that? Um, I didn't even know I was signed up for it until like two days ago because my mom signed me up for it. But so I don't really know about it. You don't know about that much yet. You just learning about what's going on, Micah. What about the basketball? How's your basketball season going? How is the training going? You doing basketball? Where'd she go? Michael left us. Okay. Uh, Joanna, I know you went to summer school. What is happening at summer school? What are the girls saying at summer school? <laughs> well, in summer school, we just, I have, we have certain classes. So I have a theater class and it's actually pretty fun. Like, mm -hmm. we play games, and today we had to instruct the game for the whole class. So, me and my other two friends were together to instruct the class in a game. It was, I think it's called Silent and Serious, where mm -hmm. you have to have a partner, and then they go, their backs are against each other. And then when we count to three, they turn around, and they have to be silent and serious. Like, they can't laugh mm -hmm. or anything like that. So, that was pretty fun like to instruct and stuff mm -hmm. and like we we have to do scenes mm -hmm. with like dialogue mm -hmm. and stuff and like just make it up from the top of our head and it's that's like a really fun class yeah that's fun not, okay like it's not really hard to fail like you can't i don't think you can really fail that class because he gives out participation points for doing the scenes and stuff so it's pretty easy so as long as you participate, yeah, you got to get great. Okay. So how you went to Cabo? Did you have fun? Yeah, I did. You did? Awesome. Okay. I don't know what happened to Micah. Elisa. Yes. Are you with us? Yes. Tell me something good. Oh, well. What um, is, what's going on? What is your happening? Well, I started doing summer school. Mm -hmm. Um, I've taken my college class. I I take art one on one, which is art history. It's kind of like boring because it's a lecture class, and mm -hmm. so all we do is take notes and then do chapter responses when we get home. But um, other than that, it's a really easy class. I had a midterm, which was forty questions last week, and I only missed one. Oh. And I'm passing that class with a 99.2% A, I think. All right, that's, that's good. That's got to be a confidence booster. Yeah. So, um, I hear that you've been going on dates, though. Oh. 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 How is I that? Next question, next question. Oh. Um. Uh, it's not. It's not a date. <laughs> it's not a date. It's not a date. I promise. It's not a date. <laughs> okay. Okay. We won't embarrass you anymore, Micah. <laughs> yes. How was basketball? <laughs> what are the girls talking about in basketball? Um, basketball is good. I feel like my coach has helped me to grow and develop and a lot better with the sport um compared to how i was last year i learned a lot more skills and a lot of things that can help me win the game next season mm -hmm. like for example um i used to just throw the wall up and sometimes it would go in but now i know how to properly shoot and it's a higher chance of me making the shot mm -hmm. um and i'm better at defense which helps slow the team down um our last game
Awesome. Okay, so what was that drama with cheerleading? Cheer? Yeah, the drama you had. You had some drama, you said. With um Sting? Yeah. Well, my cheer coach didn't really appreciate most of her team leaving. So she um privately told my mother that she didn't want me to leave. Um my parents I was gonna stay around only to hear an answer from my best friend to see what she was gonna choose. But my parents talked to me and they told me I can't rely on other people's choices to make my decision. So I had to sit there and decide whether I wanted to continue doing cheer or if I wanted to move to dance. So I, so far, I've stuck with the decision of dance and I'm going to go to dance practice tomorrow. Yay, good, good. So, everybody okay? Yeah. So I thank you so much for joining me today on my podcast and sharing a bit about yourself. Uh, it's going to be a great, great, great year for you guys. I can see when you start school, you guys are looking on a great trajectory to having a good year. I see that you guys are doing things and being involved and you're getting more confident and you even working on the things that, you know, you still, you say you're struggling with it, but you're going to keep working at it. And I'm so proud of you all for doing that. So thank you, Micah. Thank you, Elisa. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you, Naomi. And thank you, Jocelyn, for sharing your inspiring stories and insight. Remember, embrace your truth and your journey to self-acceptance, okay? It's a process. You're going to keep going through. It's going to be changes. It's going to be re-evaluations and you're going to keep you want to keep up because we're going to keep being here for you we're going to keep being accountable and you can also tune into the podcast and learn something too it, we're talking about different things on here too so all you can always tune in so join us next time on shape your truth podcast as we continue to explore empowering topics for plus size women and teens, okay, teen girls, okay, so stay tuned, we thank you so much again, and you guys all have a good night, and don't forget to shape your truth, bye. don't, bye. don't, don't buy, don't buy, uh, don't buy, don't buy. Don't buy.